Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Boxes in the Kitchen. So, we unboxed some pretty cool stuff last episode. Gibson slash Les Paul Custom 4, Machine Gun Kelly signature, and a secret prototype. Link to that in the cards if you haven't seen that yet. Check it out after this video. But, when we left off, we had a lot more gear in that poor kitchen still to unbox. So let's go behind the scenes, open some new guitar gear, and let me show you what else is coming up on the channel. By the way, before we get into it, I've had a lot of people recently saying that some of the videos aren't popping up in the feed. There are missing videos, so make sure you've hit the bell and you've ticked all notifications if you haven't already. You know, after the unboxings, we do deep dives into everything. You don't want to miss them. So I'll let you do that, and in the meantime, let's get into it. All right, first box this is getting out of hand now if you follow me on instagram you do know that i am finally moving to a bigger space which means a bigger kitchen for more boxes but i am doing a lot of downsizing to make the move easier so while all this is new those three boxes are outgoing selling a lot of stuff a few of them have already sold there were a few last time too there's a link to my reverb store that'll be in the description i do list them on instagram first though because since Etsy bought Reverb, the selling fees are ridiculous. The used market is getting ridiculous, but I try to price things to sell. Um, that's why things are clearly moving quite quickly. And a lot of guitars have barely been played outside of the demo video. So make sure to follow me on Instagram. You can snag a good deal. But in the meantime, we have some new boxes to open. Starting with the one and only Slash sent me a guitar, kind of. Uh-oh, the seal is definitely broken. Better call Gibson. All right, let's open it up. Huh. Damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's so fucking cool. Dude, that top is sick, too. So this is an Epiphone slash Les Paul in November burst. Got the new headstock slash logo on the truss rod cover, just like the Gibson version. Same general specs as the inspired by Gibson Les Paul standards. So, you know, CTS pots, Graftech nut from the Nutmasters, Epiphone Pro Buckers too. I've been told not to call them mud buckers anymore. <laughs> Slash's signatures are really cool or kind of the worst, depending on your perspective. Because spec-wise, there really isn't too much difference between this and a regular Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like playing other people's guitar, you can just replace the truss rod cover, and then, you know, it's a cool Les Paul Standard in an exclusive color. It's a Les Paul with a sick top. No one ever has to know it's a Slash signature, obviously. Um, this one is a little different. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Also, it is a regular Les Paul Standard, with the slash tax because it's got his name on it but to be fair it also comes in this exclusive case with slash's logo on it so you are getting some bonus extras i do not know what this says by the way frets seem okay Ooh, there's a couple of sharp ends here they're not too bad i can follow them down pretty easily if you're wondering where the switch top is by the way it's probably in here they stopped shipping with these installed just to keep them safe but obviously the thing we need to talk about Slash has signed this one. So originally with the Gibson version, I wanted to do a thing like I've done with Matt Hafey or Chris Robertson of Blackstone Cherry and get Slash on for the video, maybe lay down a quick little solo for the demo track or something. Apparently he wasn't comfortable with uh, the, the internet and so Gibson was like, hey, he'd like to send you a signed guitar instead. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I thought it was just gonna be, you know, signing the back of the headstock, maybe the control cavity cover or something. Nope, this man straight up drew the entire logo and signed it. That's nuts. Like, look at that sh**. Look at it. Let me get it so the light is reflecting off it too. You can see the Sharpie actually reflecting off there. That is hand drawn. All right, back of the guitar now. That's a nice, deep color unchambered mahogany body looks like a two-piece mahogany neck slash logo the vintage style tuners if i can get my camera to focus there we go people are either gonna love or hate this guitar there's so much slash stuff going on all right let's see what else is in the case epiphone strap locks case key candy where the heck is the switch tip though oh found it okay so maybe it was installed and it just like fell off or something a few moments later all right so it wasn't going on and i was like why isn't it working can you see that it looks like it was installed and it just broke off yeah it just broke right off so i'm gonna have to get that replaced luckily it's one of the replaceable parts and it's not like a headstock or anything but yeah this is my new 
slash Epiphone Les Paul Standard. Of course, there's gonna be a demo, and then, I mean, this is just gonna look so nice hanging up on the wall in the new studio. Damn, man, you know, like, most guitarists, they would just do their signature, and that's it. He's gone the extra mile and just drawn this whole fucking thing. That is so fucking cool. Shout out to Slash and to Gibson for setting this whole thing up. He's got a new album out on Gibson Records. He's on tour with Miles Kennedy in support of it right now. The new album kind of really slaps. They got performance videos on YouTube, and, uh, if you are seeing them, we're at. Unreal, man. Like, started just making videos for fun in my bedroom and now Slash has sent me a guitar and he signed it. What the fuck? Alright, one last little close look at this and now we gotta move on. Let's see what else is in the kitchen. Alright, next box. Let's mix it up. Let's go with this little guy down here. Alright, so these are string slings. Yeah, for those of you who can't read, I got you. But essentially what they are is large Velcro pouches. And it's got this, oh my god, that's so fucking soft. So you fit these around your guitar neck. And they basically protect your guitar strings from the elements, from corrosion. Because as we all know, buying new strings sucks. That shit adds up. I use treated strings most of the time. I know a lot of people don't like those. So this is another solution to help your strings last longer. Again, I need to emphasize emphasize how fucking soft this is. They sent these over for me to check out, include some extra goodies like picks, another thing that I spend way too much money on because that shit adds up. And what are these? Strap locks? A few moments later. So that's how it works. Very simple. Made in the USA too. That's really cool. Not gonna lie to you, just like treated strings is a bit on the pricey side up front, but long term something like this saves you a lot of money because you're not constantly buying strings. At least if you're changing them as often as you should, which I definitely don't. <laughs> we move. And here it is on a seven string. It's probably where I'd use it the most because I don't use my seven strings nearly as much. And the worst is when you haven't played a guitar in a long time, you pick it up, you just want to play, and the strings are fucking trash and it's just uninspiring to play. So yeah, it works. I don't think it would work for an Eight string though the fingerboards are just too wide i mean if you're playing an eight string you may as well play bass anyways right <laughs> that was a joke you guys all right so anyways that was a string sling made in the usa let's move on next box oh, i really want to open this one but i think i'm gonna save it to last this one's looking kind of plain and mysterious i'm kind of curious yeah let's go with this one let's open it up Oh my god, this is a very good guitar day. PRS does this really clever thing where they ship guitars in a gig bag and then they use this molded piece of styrofoam to protect the headstock. It also prevents the guitar from moving in transit. More of this from other companies, please. Uh, so this is another kind of old school dad rocky guitar. It's a PRS SE 2408 standard. Or is it PRS SE standard 2408? Whatever, we move. Because either way, in my opinion, this is the best bang for buck PRS there is today and it's because of these things. And we'll talk about those in a second. Right now, let's talk about the guitar overall. So classic PRS SE24 shape. They've recently changed the shape of the top. It's now a shallow violin carve. It looks much better than the old one. They're trying to move these closer to the S2 and core versions. Actual rosewood fingerboard, bird inlays. Now, PRS is in the past and still some models like the SE Starla that I tried. You could split the pickups, but it was a single push pull pot and it split both of them at the same time. On this one, each of these mini toggles corresponds to each pickup. So you can split them individually, set and forget like I do. I prefer the neck split with a full humbucker. So that's how I like to keep it. I tried the SE Custom 2408 last year and that was awesome. But since this is all mahogany, it's got a plain top rather than the maple cap with the flame maple veneer. This is the most affordable variant of the highly versatile 2408 platform. Started off as a private stock feature. They're now doing an S2 version as well. So they're doing the 2408 at every price point. But this being the most affordable one and you get the coil splits, in my opinion, best bang for buck from PRS. I've always loved SE Bridges too. Brushed metal saddles are so comfortable for chugs. I love the functionality. The way these mini toggles are laid out though, it almost looks like an aftermarket DIY mod. Like it looks like a reverb listing where someone's just drilled into their guitar. But again, I mean, you're getting eight different sounds out of this thing, so that's pretty cool. And I love the look of natural top guitars. Like they always look so much better in person than they do in stock photos. Yeah, this being an affordable SE, there is a fair amount of filler around the inlays, but that's the only visual defect 
I can find. If you can even call it a defect. Alright, one last little flyover. Let's see what else is in the kitchen. Alright, last box for this episode. Do we go with the big one? Do we go for this fancy one? Or this quiet and mysterious one back here? Nah, I mean, it's gotta be this one, right? Let's open it up. Alright, again, I stress, don't get too excited, these are just initial prototypes. These are just color experiments to see what works, what doesn't. This was supposed to be shell pink, it's come out looking not very shell pink. It looks more pink in person, on camera it does not look pink at all. <laughs> It looks more white, which is kind of cool. Let's see if they've, uh, yeah, they've added coil splits like I asked. But yeah, the initial prototype, let me know what you think. So that'll do it for this episode of Boxes in the Kitchen. A lot of cool stuff, and I'm trying to get all this gear out of the boxes and demos filmed for the editors for when I move, and I won't be able to make videos for a little bit. So yeah, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, take all notifications, that way you don't miss any of the deep dives. Again, a lot of viewers recently have been saying that the videos are just not popping into their feeds, which is very concerning. So Discord can also keep you up to date. Link to join that in the description and the mods have just recently revamped that so it's a great time to join. But that is all I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.